doesn't matter what your past is. God knows you. God knows the depths of your soul. Even the things that you don't even think anybody knows or you don't want them to know that you kind of hide and don't even think about, God knows. God knows the depth and the darkness of your heart and He loves you anyway. And He made a way for you to escape that. And that way is His Son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. 31.3, the Lord has appeared of old, saying to me, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Now, do you know what was taking place in Israel when Jeremiah wrote these words? Were they prospering as a nation? I'll give you the the answer is no. Okay? Jeremiah is referred to as the what kind of prophet? The weeping prophet. Do you know why? He wrote the book of Lamentations. But he warned them, and he warned them, and he warned them that, listen, you guys are going to be taken into captivity, and judgments from God are going to come, and it's going to change your entire world. Turn back to God while you still can. And did they listen to him? No. Did they listen to God? And yet Jeremiah writes this when they're going to go into captivity that God looks at you with an everlasting love and God knows the plans He has for you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Even though you've sinned, even though your choices have brought you into captivity, I have a plan for you and I will call you back. Don't allow your sin to separate you from God. Don't allow your conscience to separate you from God has given you that conscience to allow you to see the choices you made, although they're wrong, to draw you back to Him. Who's the only one that can cleanse you from your sin? You should answer that a lot quicker. Think about this. Who is the only one that can cleanse you from your sin? So why is it when we sin, we actually hide from Him instead of running to Him? That's what the devil does. Listen. You, those of us who have raised children, do you remember when you caught your kid doing something wrong? And they were just, you know, they didn't want to tell you what they did. They would lie to your face. They would do anything they could not to be in trouble. But then they finally told you the truth. And for a lot of parents who really loved their kids, when they told the truth, you could just see that fear melt away from that child's expression in their face because they realize my mommy and my daddy, they love me and I'm still their child. And I'm still part of this family. God the Father looks at you the same way. He may chastise you because you need it. Right? Because you need it. Uh, and it's through that chastisement that you bring you and draw you back to Him. He doesn't chastise you out of His anger. He chastises you out of His love. Bring you back to Him. So, God's desire for us, when we look at James chapter 1, verse 17, James tells us that God is holy and there is no darkness or shadow of turning in Him. Revelation chapter 4 tells us, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We looked at John, or 1 John 4, 8, tells us that God is love. God knows the pain and the suffering that sins cause. And God, in His great love for us, wants to break the power of sin, and He wants to break the power of pain and death in us. And the way He's done that is through His Son, Jesus Christ. As I come to the conclusion of this message, how does God do this? How does God work in us? We're told that God sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. Jesus said, and it was said in the Sabbath school class, if I be lifted up, I will draw how many men to, to me? All. And that word men means mankind. That I will draw all mankind towards me. Okay? So Jesus has come to save us and to give us life. Not just life, but to give us 
his life. Do you understand that? That when we accept Christ, that Christ lives in us, and Christ works out his character in us. And that's the great transformation. That God takes away my sin, and God cleanses me from all of my unrighteousness, and God will change my character, if I, like, if I let him, into the character of his son, Jesus Christ. So that when the world, my co-workers, or my family sees me, they see Christ. How are we going to win the world when, three weeks ago, we couldn't even come out of our houses? Okay? How are we going to show the world the power of God when the world is so afraid of a virus? The world will see Christ when they see Him living in His people. And that is His love, His character. Okay? Now listen very carefully to what I'm going to say here. You will never convert somebody by teaching them doctrine. Tell me one amen. Do you guys believe that? Think about what we're saying here. Doctrine is important, but doctrine will never change the heart. Because if doctrine could change the heart, then the scribes and the Pharisees would be the closest ones to God Himself. Right? Because they had the doctrine, and they were living it out on the outside. But Jesus says your inside, your motives and your heart are like open graves. It's a dirty cup filled with all kinds of abominations. The only way to get somebody to have a true living relationship with Jesus Christ is to show them who Christ is. Right. And to be able to do that, we have to know who Christ is. We have to have Him living inside of us. So again, as I close this morning, I want to leave you with these thoughts. What does God want me to do now that I'm beginning to understand His love for me? Turn with me to Matthew 22. Let's look at verses 27 or 37 and 38. Matthew 22. Matthew 22, 37 and 38. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with what? All your heart. All your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Listen, what is God calling you to do? It's not hard. It's not hard at all. God is calling you to love Him with all of your heart, all of your soul, all your strength. And then go out and love your neighbor as yourself. The question is asked then, who's my neighbor? What's the answer to that question? Everyone. Everyone you meet, right? So if you have the love of God burning inside your heart, is it going to stay there? It's going to come out, right? This is why being a Christian back in the first century was so exciting, because they understood this and they lived it. And this is why they were willing to die for it. And that's the difference between their day and their day. This is what the world so desperately needs to see, and that is Christ in us. His love and His mercy. It's not that hard. Okay? We are to be Jesus, first to our family, then to our church family, and then to our community. We are called to love and to do good works for those around us, um, and doing them in the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.10 states that we were created for good works Amen. in Christ Jesus. So Marty, why do we keep feeding the homeless? Why do we keep feeding those who may drive better cars than we do? Because we're doing it in the love of Christ. Because that's what God has called us to do. Listen, when you make this choice to love as God loves, people are going to take advantage of you. You better realize that now. Is that right? Okay? That's part of walking the Christian life. Are we called to judge? The answer is no, but are we called to love? Leave that with Christ. Let Christ work those things out. But it's better to err on the side of love than to not do something that could help another human being. Exactly. That's what Christ would do. Yeah. Let me ask you this, and this is what I'll close with. When Jesus walked the soil of Palestine, 
Did he convert everyone he healed? No. If he went through entire towns and healed every disease, where were those people when his trial was going on and Pilate asked, who do you want, Christ or Barabbas? Where were all those people who he had touched, who he had healed, who he had saved? Where were they? In the end, he had 12 men, and out of those 12, 10 of them left. Okay? Two of them followed him. One followed him all the way. And Peter followed him to the courtyard, and a little girl ran him out. Right? Judas went and hung himself. Who was always there? Who was always there? From beginning all the way to the end. It was the women. Right? Ladies, it was the women. They were always there. Who was the first one Jesus showed himself to after his resurrection? There's a reason for that. Listen. God has called us to be his hands and his feet. Guys, God has called you for a specific ministry. Ladies, God has called you for a specific ministry. What you have to do is know what that ministry is. You have to know what God has called you for. Be confident in that ministry and go out and do it. Right? So, continue to seek God, continue to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we will look deeper. Well, sorry, i got to put that part away. Continue to seek God, continue to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Know without a doubt how much God loves you and why He loves you, and then show that love to your family first, to your church family second, and then to your community, which is your world that God's called you to actually change into effect. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 518, Standing on the Crosses.
if we remember anything of what was spoken here today, then it will be your unfathomable love. And Father, as we go through this week, my prayer for all those gathered here today is that they will meditate on your love for them. That they will be strengthened by your love. That they will be filled with your Holy Spirit. And that they will go out and affect their world with a power that is not from human beings, but is from Almighty God. Father, bless this church. Pray that you will continue to help it to grow. I pray that your spirit will be continuously poured out here upon those who enter its doors. For this I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.